Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about some hand filing. So we're going to do a little bit of hand filing and then we'll come back to these aids here. Now, this video is purely designed for the beginner. So we get you off to a good start and don't develop any bad habits. Typically, we'll be talking about semi chisel. I might briefly touch on full chisel. But we'll talk about semi-chisel. So for those that are not too familiar, that is your semi-chisel. Your semi-chisel has a radius on the edge and your full chisel comes to a square edge that looks like that. So it has a much sharper point but is more prone to being dull. So our semi-chisel has a working corner on this edge here. You can see that there's a fairly large corner here. It doesn't come to a sharp point. So we've got a still chain here and I've got a weight on the bottom you can see the weight that's my little setup that I've got it's an adjustable setup you can adjust adjust it up and down so we'll have it set at that filing position and it's a still 3.8 semi chisel chain here now if we have a look closely you'll see all these little triangles that I've got here and what they are is little file marks so it always keeps me in check. I've got 25 degrees here. I've got 10 degrees here, 15 degrees here, 35 degrees here, which I never use, and 30 degrees here. So 30 degrees being for your semi-chisel and 25 degrees being for your full chisel. The reason that we use 30 degrees, it's a good angle. It will hold the edge for quite a while. Uh, and you'll find out that as you go sharper, it gets a little bit dull, sharper in your angle, like 30 degrees, it will uh, get a little bit blunt quicker than say 25 degrees, but remember this is full chisel and where 30 degrees is semi chisel and the semi chisel has the much larger working corner, so it's less prone to going blunt. But it cuts a little bit slower, about 10% slower. So before you sharpen a chain, you should inspect it. And yes, you can sharpen your chain on a chainsaw uh, and you could mount that in a vise. That's a great idea. Take the chain tension up is a great idea so that it's nice and tight and you can use the chain brake to stop it moving. Use a permanent marker and I've already marked where I'm going to start. I'm not going to talk about all the different chains that are out there, the different sizes. The I don't want to confuse the beginner. This is a 3.8 standard chain, which you'll use on a 60cc saw and upwards. And there is a 3.8 lower profile, which uses a thinner gauge, and it's a smaller tooth, and that's 3.8 low profile for small saws between 30 and 40 cc's. So we're only going to deal with the 3.8 uh, standard chain which is on your 50 cc saw and upwards now we spoke before about this angles these angles that are here and these angles are referred to the top plate angle so this is what is referred to as your top plate angle and this is your 30 degrees here there is another angle which we refer to top plate cutting angle because this top plate has a beveled angle on the face. And normally if the file's held in the right position, you'll get a 60 degree angle on that. Now the right position of the file is to be roughly between 20 and 25% above the tooth. So yeah, your file should be up sort of here somewhere. So what we'll do, we'll, now the other thing is, be in semi-chisel, make sure that you file horizontal, not down on an angle, not, not up on an angle. Keep it as horizontal as possible. So what we'll try and do, we'll try and zoom in there and get a good angle of, with the camera so that you can see what's going on. So we spoke before about holding at the 30 degree angle there. You can actually see one of the lines over here because I've got a few angles written on the back. You can see the 30 degrees. So we've got them on the back of this. If we just zoom back out, I'll show you that. I've got them on the back as well, as well as the front because I mainly use 30 degrees. That's 30, that's 30, and that's 30. 
So that's lined up with 30 degrees so that I'm not that way or that way. I line up on the mark. Now, when you use a file, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it's a two-handed uh, operation. So the thumb and the forefinger here, and we just want nice little, nice even strokes. Don't apply an enormous amount of pressure. A file is probably good enough for about 2,000 strokes. So don't use old files because they don't work too good. And then just apply a bit of pressure upwards and backwards, up and back. Because you've got to keep about 20% of this file above the tooth. So it's just a matter of nice, even strokes. You can actually feel that felt good. And we'll just go to the next tooth. Normally I don't adjust, I'm, I don't normally adjust this every time I file, but for demonstration purposes, I want to keep it into the camera, so I just want to make sure that we're, you can see what's going on. Now, one of the other things, and it depends, don't pull the file back. It's the quickest way to damage all the little uh, teeth that are on there. They look like fish scales. Now, you'll find out that when you're filing, you need to inspect to make sure that you're filing correct. So we'll have a look after this. I can feel that. It feels pretty good. So we'll just go to the next one. And that's why I take the file off so that I don't draw it back. So it's just a matter of continuously filing that till you finish all the way around. Okay, that's one method. The second method what I want to show you is that this is called a file guide. This is made by Still, and it's specific for 3 8 And you can see it says 5.2 millimeter file there, and it's got 3 8 written there on it. And it's got a part number. So what you do, push the file in, it locks in there, tighten the nut up. Now these are highly recommended for beginners because what it does, it keeps the file exactly in the right position. So what we'll do, we'll bring another tooth up into the right position, which is about here. Now, it's got a mark on it. We'll just see whether you can see that mark. You should be able to see it. You can see this mark here, this line. We'll just zoom right in. There it is there. That line has to line up with the chain. As you can see, that, that's no good, that's no good. That's the right position there. So, and what it does, if you actually have a good look, what I will do, I'll just mark this with texture so that you can see, hopefully you can see what I'm trying to explain. You can barely just see the tooth through there. We'll just see whether you can come down on that. So there's the red tooth. We'll line it up in a position. You can see the mark. So again, hold it. And now, if you want to pull it back, you can pull it back without taking it off, but don't apply any pressure. That's the quickest way to ruin your file. Just pull it back. So it's barely touching. You only want about three or four passes lightly, and that feels pretty good. Now, what I will do is, that's the back of the file, so you can see that what actually happens is that the file's held in the right position. 20% of it would sit up. So what I'd like to do is take that chain off, and just have a look at that one that we just filed. 
it should look pretty good. I'll just uh, clean the tooth. It's got a few little filings on it. It's about as good as what you're going to get. And the ones before it, that would have been the ones before. Sometimes you can see a few little burrs on them. That's normal. But that's fairly sharp. And there'll be another one before that. Bit of a burr there. See that with my fingernail. It's not a bad camera angle. It shows up every defect. You can even see me. My fingers, you can just see every detail there. You can see the file marks in there as well. That's why I like grinders. There's a little bit of a burr there. But that's sharp. Nice. Look at that edge. Beautiful straight edge. Nice and sharp. That's done by hand. So there's two... Uh, ways of doing the chain with the file guide and freehand filing you'll get better at it with practice now we spoke about the different filing gadgets this one is by still it's got 25 degrees on one side and 30 degrees on the other the whole idea is that you can place it being magnetic it would sit there like that and you could line up, not using, if we take the file back out, you could use that as your guide. A lot of times people do this out in the field. They'll take it out in the field with them and you can put that on your chainsaw bar with a stump vise and you can proceed to file whether you want 30 degrees for semi-chisel or 25 degrees there for full chisel. So that's from still. Uh, you have to generally order them, in, order them in. Some shops may have them sitting in there. Now, let's just say that you filed your chain left and right. When you finish, and it doesn't matter what chain, the file. Now, these file guides, it's not one fits all, it's chain specific. So if you were doing 3 8 low profile, you have to get a uh, a chain guide that's for 3.8 low profile. So this one, as I mentioned before, uh, has a 5.2 millimeter file or 1360 force. There's the part number 5605754329. There's 3.8 there, so it's 3.8 low. Uh, sorry, it's 3.8 standard. For 3.8 low profile, it's different. See, 5.2 millimeter file or a 1360 force, and You've even got 10 degrees, I think, yeah, is it 10 degrees there? Yeah, 10 degrees, is. there's a bit of a line there for 10 degrees. That'll be for your milling chain. There's no 25 degrees. Uh, still uh, generally recommend 30 degrees for full chisel and semi-chisel. Anyway, that's up to you whether you want to use the 25 degrees on full chisel. So after you've done one side... You've got to do the other side, and it's best for me. I'm right-handed, so I'll turn the, the chain around, and I'll do it from the other angle. One little word of warning that beginners can make the mistake is that if you change between the left and the right hand, uh, the teeth are always viewed from the back of the two. So the left hand is obviously, if you're standing behind the chain, the left is on the left side and the right tooth are on the right side. So when you change between sharpening left and right, you may change hands, which is what I do. And if you're a right-hander, you might find out you're stronger in the right hand, which may mean that you may file more on the right uh, side than the left. So just bear that in mind. Now, you don't have to be that uh, fussy about 
if you are slot one tooth is slightly longer than the other i wouldn't worry about that too much now let's just say that you spent quite a bit of time especially if you're a beginner generally it's going to take a lot longer uh, your first few chains until you get in the swing of things but let's just say that you've sharpened it and it's razor sharp no point having it razor sharp you've got these little depth gauges we'll zoom in there on the front of the tooth they're called depth gauges you can see it better on here that little hook that's your depth gauge what that actually does is it sets the amount that the tooth can bite into the timber. Because if you didn't have that, the chain would just bog down into the timber. It'd be like sinking an axe into a timber. So you've got to limit how much the tooth can cut. And that's done by one of these gauges here. Now this type of gauge was invented where it's got 0.65 of a millimetre. This type of gauge is placed over about four teeth and sits right in front of the raker if the raker protrudes through that little gap then we use a file and we run it place it up on top of the gauge the gauge is hardened on these steel gauges they're hardened so you can run the file over the top because this is harder than the file this has a rockwell hardness of 62 and the file has a rockwell hardness of about 60 even though it's only two Rockwell difference, you won't file it. So that is what a lot of people use. It works okay in the beginning, but as the tooth wears down around halfway, you really don't want to be using this gauge because it won't give you 100% cutting efficiency because it will only ever set the raker depth, this depth that we've got on here, so if we were to measure the distance between here and here, it's only ever going to keep 0.65 of a millimetre. This type of gauge is called a progressive depth gauge. Now, that first gauge was invented by Joseph Cox in Portland, and he invented that in the early 50s. Ray Carlton, who also worked uh, for Oregon, left the company, formed his own company, and you may be of, aware of Carlton Chain. He invented the progressive depth gauge called Philo Plate in 1968. And the whole idea of this, rather than fit over four teeth, it fits over one individual tooth. And we'll see whether you can see that uh, up a lot closer. There it is there. So as you can see, that if the raker or de depth gauge, so this is a depth gauge tool, so if the actual depth gauge sits over the plate and you run the file again this is uh, hardened to 62 rockwell so you can run the file straight over the top you've got a hard and soft setting hardwood is where we are at the moment this is for softwood now there is a left and a right as you can see it's sitting up in the top uh part of the square if we go to the next tooth it'll sit at the lower part the little legs sit on the tie straps in front of uh, the tooth. And as you can see, if you tip it over, the actual tooth sits here. You can see where it's been rubbing. Still introduced these uh, only about five years ago, whereas Ray Carlton uh, invented and put a worldwide patent on the uh, progressive depth gauge in 1968. Now... When you first put this on a brand new tooth, it will keep the depth at 0.65 millimetres. But by the time you get to the end of the life, and if we zoom in, in the end of the life, for those that are not too sure what that terminology means, is that you'll notice that there's a little mark on the tooth. That little mark there is that's the end of the life. So as you file the tooth, it will reduce and reduce. By the time you get down to here, you won't be taking... 0.65 of a millimetre, the gap would have increased from 0.65 to about 1.2 millimetres in depth. So just to sort of recap on that, brand new tooth starts off the distance between the height, this height here and this height is 0.65 of a millimetre when it's brand new. By the time it wears down to this mark, 
then it's going to be double that amount almost, 1.2 millimetres. Reason it increases so much is that the distance between the raker and the tooth when it's brand new on a 3.8 chain is getting close to 6 millimetres. And by the time you get down to here, it's about 12 millimetres. So as we increase this distance here, the efficiency of 0.65 of a millimetre diminishes. And you're lucky if you've got 60% efficiency uh, if you use that uh, flat gauge, which is referred to as a constant depth gauge, because it constantly will keep the depth at 0.65 of a millimetre. Whereas this type of gauge, progressive, it'll progressively go from 0.65 to about 1.2 millimetres by the time you get to the end of the life. Now, these aren't currently available in America, uh, as far as I know, and I don't know why. They've been out. Ray Carlton invented the progressive depth gauge and called it file a plate and put a worldwide patent on it. You can't get them in America now because Blount own Oregon and Carlton. So they stopped making them. I don't know why. But West Coast Saws in America must have said, oh, well, there's, there's, uh, there's something that we can make. So they make progressive depth gauges, West Coast Saws in America. So get on their website. You can order them. They're not a bad price. And there's nothing wrong with them. They work quite well. They may not have the hardness as good as what, as what this is. Uh, I've never had one, so I can't say how good they are. But from all reports that I'm hearing... There's nothing wrong with them and they work good. And they do the same thing. They come in hard and soft settings as well. Now, Husqvarna are not new to depth gauges. They sell two different types. This is a combination roller guide as well as a depth gauge. And so this is progressive depth gauge as well, but it has a roller guide. The whole idea of this roller guide is that it's got left and right, it sits over the chain, and if you've got your file, the whole idea of it is that if you hold your file in that position, you're guaranteed that it's 30 degrees. That's the way that it works, uh, and they work quite well. So Husqvarna have a huge range of those, uh, and it's the same thing, not one will fit all, you've got to get whether you've got a 3.8 load profile or whatever you've got, you've got to get the right one for your right chain. And as I said, we're only talking about 3.8 standard chain, not 3.8 load profile or 0.325 or 404 or quarter inch. All those chains that I just mentioned have a different uh, file guide. There's five of these in the series as well. It starts from FL1, FL2, FL3, FL4. So FL1 is for quarter inch. FL2 is for 3.8 low profile. FL3 is for 0.325. FL4 being this one is for 3.8 standard chain. And FL5 is for uh, 404 chain. So it's exactly the same thing. You go into Husqvarna and you ask for either the roller guide or the depth gauge, make sure that you get the right one for your type chain, whatever that may be. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the rest of it will be up to you, how good your technique is at filing. Everybody uh, is different at filing. Some people are worse than others. And that's why I recommended that Get yourself one of these, and a lot of people just use them all the time. But get yourself one of these, get used to filing. When you're used to the filing, by all means, take it off and try some free freehand trialing. Filing, not trialing. And then make sure that when you do freehand filing, that you don't file down deep into the gullet. And by that, I mean, you don't want the, you want to be filing right down here. You want to make sure that you're keeping your file up about 20%. Now, when we look at a chain, it's a little bit of a telltale sign where you are. And if you look at the chrome plating on there, the chrome plating only comes right down to the very bottom. Now, I'll just see if I can get something to this, this little pointer. Now, you don't want to be filing anywhere past this line here. This is referred to the gullet. 
So your file should not go down here. Now, if I grab a 5.2 millimeter file and I pop it in, hopefully you can see. I'm going to try and get it right. Focus is the worst thing on these. Uh, you can see where that sits there. Yeah, I'll try and get it better. Just, just bear with me. Okay, that's, that's sitting, remember we spoke about being 20%. That's roughly where the file's got to sit, not right down here. You've got to make sure that you hold it right about there. It's about 20% of the file sits above. Now, for your 3.8 chain, still recommend this file here, which is a 5.2 millimeter file. A lot of the other chain manufacturers recommend a 5.5 millimeter file. So a lot of people, what they do, because your chain is tapered like that and it gets smaller the actual tooth gets smaller they start off on a 5.5 millimeter file and as you we wear once it wears down about halfway they switch to a 5.2 you can do that on a steel chain without a problem that won't cause you any uh, problems whatsoever it's just it's still recommend 5.2 so I'm just quoting what still recommend that's up to you whether you want to do it that way Personally, with a lot of the other chain that's available out there, I use a 5.5 millimeter file when they're brand new, and I switch to 5.2 when they wear right down. So that's one way of doing it. Only other one uh, thing that I will say that when you are filing chain, try and make sure that you're in a very comfortable position uh, with this unit that I've got here. It's adjustable, so I can adjust that to my comfort zone, and then I can just sort of rest against here, when the chain's on there, I can just relax and rest in a nice comfortable position and file, uh, yeah, so that's probably one of the most important things, being comfortable, because if you're all jammed up in the corner and you're all awkward, you're liable to make mistakes. Anyway, I don't think there's much else I can talk about. The rest is up to you. And only one final point, that if you are filing out in on the field, get yourself a stump vice. It can make it difficult. Normally, I don't file out in the field because it's time-consuming and I just find it more it's more difficult to file in the field. Take a few spare chains with you. It doesn't take long to swap the chains over. Some people hate swapping chains, but remember also this tip, that when you sharpen a chain up, you should flip, and if you take the chain off, turn your bar over. If you don't turn your bar over, and some people say, oh, I hardly take my uh, chain off, I file it while it's on there. Well, you can't clean your chainsaw and all the sawdust and rubbish properly unless you take it off. So if you take it off, when you put it back, flip it over the other side so that the top of the bar and the bottom of the bar is getting even wear and your bar's going to last twice as long. If you don't flip it over, all the bottom's going to get worn and the tops will only get worn a little bit. So plus the nose, you'll make sure that, you know, you want to make sure that everything is getting even wear and you need to do that as part of regular maintenance that you clean everything and when you assemble it back, you flip it back the other way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.